Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you here today with a video from the Daily Signal dated June 1st. And I saw the headline and I thought this is probably something I want to talk about. And I know the article is going to be a bit on the longer side, so just be prepared for that. But it says, Forgotten DC riots did far more physical damage to America. Now, I bet you can uh, go out there to normal people and probably ask them, like, hey, did you know that there were riots in D.C.? Like, I think it was May 29th is the day they're going to uh, mention in the article. Uh, and people are probably going to be like, what? I had no idea that happened. It's because our media is awful and doesn't report these actual things out. So I wonder how many people out there actually know that this was a, a thing that really took place. So let's go into the article, see what it says. It says, the three-year anniversary of the Lafayette Square and Black Lives Matter riots in the nation's capital has come and gone without much media fanfare. Of course, they're not going to report on anything that makes them look like idiots or anyone on the left. <coughs> not cutting that out. <coughs> it says, these apparently forgotten riots and the harsher official response to the Capitol riot seven months later say much about our media landscape and rapidly transforming legal system. On May 29th, yep, I was right, 2020, a riot in front of the White House in Lafayette Square prompted a lockdown to protect then-President Donald Trump and the first family. And yeah, I remember watching this on TV, and they were, like, people on the, they is the people on the left, the media, people on the left were all basically pointing and laughing at Trump about how he had to be taken to, like, a bunker, even though there was, like, a mob of people outside of the White House that were trying to break down the fence to get in there. It's like, well, what else are you going to do if you're the president? Or anybody, you're going to try to get away from it and get to safety. Uh, anyway, it says... At the time, four days after George Floyd's death in police custody in Minneapolis, many in the media portrayed the incident as Trump hiding from protesters, see what I mean, and being real mean to them rather than an assault on democracy. Yeah, that would be an actual assault on democracy. You know, the people trying to rampage into the White House to try to do something bad to the president, regardless of what side of the political spectrum either of those groups are. Article continues, but it was a serious riot. Protesters tried to get inside a temporary fence protecting the White House before being stopped by police. Yep. That was definitely what happened. It says the situation kept getting worse. The next day, rioters set fire to part of historic St. John's Episcopal Church, Lafayette Square, a block from the White House. And I think, if I remember correctly, that was that's the church that uh, Abraham Lincoln used to just like walk out of the White House and just walk right over into the church and just go in there, you know, before the Secret Service was a thing. So yeah, there you go. He just was able to do that once upon a time. So such chaos continued in the district for the next month and throughout the summer. And Greg Price, who you should definitely follow on Twitter. I tweeted this on May 31st, but yeah, this is, I remember seeing this. this is three years ago tonight. This is what our nation's capital looked like during the George Floyd riot. So yeah, that's a, it's always a great thing. So it says damages resulting from the DC unrest, which were extensive and other Black Lives Matter protests around the country ran into the billions of dollars. Yet the DC riots are mostly forgotten, even though the damage to our society went far beyond the physical or the financial and physical. So some rioters were arrested in connection with acts of mayhem, vandalism, and violence. Did they pay a price for their actions? Not really. So dozens of people were arrested, including a man who jumped over two barriers in an attempt to enter the White House, Julie Kelly wrote in American Greatness, and she's another person that you should definitely follow. Uh, also on the American Greatness, that's where she usually, her work shows up. But she also does a lot of reporting on the J6 defendants. Uh, that's very enlightening, so check it out. And she does show up on uh, Tim Cast as well, Tim Pool's uh, nighttime show. So again, if you check her out on there, that'd be great as well. It says, yet only a handful of protesters faced federal charges. In sharp contrast to January 6th protesters, who all face federal accounts even for low-level offenses such as parading in the Capitol. It says nearly all of the charges initially filed by the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office were dropped. She noted, she noted that U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Matthew Graves, didn't take office until November of 2021. And that guy has just been awful. Like, he's going after people that just, like, were there. It's almost as if, like, Let's just say there was, like, a gigantic fight in a mall that you were in, and you were, like, at the other end of the mall and happened to be caught on camera. <laughs> like, being in the mall at the same time, like, a fight broke out at the other end, and someone's, like, trying to come after you, you know, because you just happened to be near the same location but had nothing to do with it. That's basically what this guy's doing. Um, so... Article goes on and says, Gray is appointed by President Joe Biden, said at a May 16th hearing that our office prosecutes all acts of violence, regardless of political motivation, the same. So that's bullshit because we've seen this how many times where 
if you're on the left and you do the same thing as someone on the right, the person on the right gets in serious trouble. Person on the left just kind of slap on the wrist, go on with your day, and nothing happens. So the article says, yeah, right. It says the Justice Department has relentlessly pursued those who are part of the January 6, 2021 breach of the Capitol. Yes, they have. It says more, th- more than 1,033 of the rioters, rioters have been arrested, with approximately 485 federal defendants receiving sentences, Politico reported Tuesday. About 277 defendants have been sentenced to time behind bars, and roughly 113 defendants have been sentenced to a period of home detention. Let's contrast that with the riots in front of the White House and elsewhere in D.C. in 2020. It says FBI agents worked about 16,000 more hours during the pay period of the Capitol riot of, Dece- of January 6, 2021, than they did during the pay period of the 2020 riots that hit Washington, D.C., Fred Lucas reported for the Daily Signal. That's the website we're on. It says the dif- difference in treatment is stark. It says in 2020, torching a federal courthouse or massing at the White House grounds in efforts to get at the president earned either few arrests or literal, little or no jail time, conservative scholar Victor Davis Hanson wrote. It's another guy you should definitely pay attention to as well. He's really good. Then in 2021, if one entered the Capitol and illegally paraded around like a buffoon, he could get a five-year prison sentence. Does that really highlight the fundamental problem exposed by the radically different responses to civil unrest? Does it's obvious that by the standards of the legacy media, not all insurrections are treated equally, and that's been true for some time. As we've known, more worryingly, it seems that the judicial system and the legal profession are, have, are being radicalized and weaponized correct that's in the name of social justice radicals are throwing away the ideal are throwing away the ideal of an adversarial system where justice is blind correct says it wasn't just the rioters in front of the white house who seemingly got off easy for instance two new york, two new york lawyers firebombed an nypd police cruiser during the 2020 blm protest i remember that says this act of terrorism which is what it was was a serious crime regardless of who committed it that's correct says but the fact that it was committed by two lawyers who presumably swore to uphold the constitution made it much worse and not just that but they were extreme far leftists and i see their names below so we're going to go into that i wonder if it mentions that these people were extremists says and what was the result of their crime says glowing profiles from some media outlets in the new york times because of course because why wouldn't the new york times run defense for someone on the far left that does a terrorism essentially so the new york times spun a sympathetic story about how the two lawyers Collinford mattis and rouge Rahman, were good people who made a mistake and ruined their careers the courts took it from there yeah does the original indictment included a 40-year mandatory minimum count which is what it should have been and madison Rahman asked for a punishment of life imprisonment or they risked i'm sorry risked a punishment of life imprisonment yeah when i said asked that didn't make sense so they risked a punishment of life imprisonment i wouldn't i wouldn't have blinked if that was the case either says fox news reported a year ago but federal prosecutors instead sought a 10-year sentence for the pair (laughs) Okay. Says it's bad enough that these dangerous criminals have been allowed to sit at home for the past two years, Patrick J. Lynch, president of New York City's P- Police Benevolent Association, said at the time. Handing them a below guideline sentence would give a green light to other anti police radicals who seek to advance their cause through violence. The judge must reject this request. And that's not what happened. Says Justice Department prosecutors argued that the history and personal characteristics of Mattis and Rahman and the aberrational nature of the defendant's conduct warranted lighter sentences. So those. Those people shouldn't be lawyers, but that's probably why they're lawyers, because <coughs> lawyers suck. Because in the end, the two lawyers were merely disbarred and given sentences of just over a year in prison. So they were risking between 40 years in life, okay, for terrorism, and said they essentially got a slap on the wrist. They got just over a year in prison, and the disbarment would should have been like, like the least thing that happened to them. So... Okay, says so it's likely that our legal system will get more biased and radical, as hard as that is to believe. Fanaticism for left-wing causes rather than adherence to basic decency and a commitment to free speech is taking over elite law schools. Yeah, and you've seen that at like things like Yale and Stanford and stuff like that. So it's telling that Chase Abudin, the district attorney who was too radical even for San Francisco, was just hired as executive director of a new research and advocacy center of the law school at University of California, Berkeley. Now that Chase Abudin guy, go look up who his parents were, okay? And you can see that, and who raised him, because his parents were in jail, okay, and see who raised him. He was raised by 1970s weather underground extremists, like extreme far left people, and he's just taken up that mantle, and so he's an extremist, and yeah, and I mean, if you're too extreme for San Francisco, then there's something wrong with you, (laughs) okay? Like, like if, if Mao, Chairman Mao himself was up for district attorney in San Francisco, uh, they probably would vote him in, okay? So, just to give you an idea. Does soon, said constitutional lawyer 
Ilya Shapiro, who was ruthlessly canceled by Georgetown University, and Ilya Shapiro is actually a, a conservative, says these law students will be occupying influential positions in state and federal government, bringing legal cases, becoming state legislators in some cases, or occupying the general counsel's offices of Fortune 500 companies in the partnership ranks of big firms. And that is a scary thing. It says the ideological weaponization of our judicial system undermines the foundation of what makes America a free country. It says that's what was truly unleashed and exposed during the riots of 2020. The physical damage was not bad enough or was bad enough the long-lasting damage of giving the mob a pass because it aligned with the values of our elite ruling class will be far worse yep 100 percent. and that's what you're seeing kind of all over the place you know people on opposite sides of the political spectrum do the same thing or the person on one side of the political spectrum does something far more uh, lenient than the other person and the person who does the uh, not so bad thing is the person who gets like you know put through the ringer and the person who does the really bad thing essentially is just basically told don't do it again and get on with your no, just get out of here and move on with your life as if nothing happened. So, do you guys remember uh, that th these riots happened in D.C.? Do you remember us uh, saying that President Trump had to be rushed to a bunker because of what was going on here? Uh, you know, during these riots, uh, what do you think about this? Did you hear about those lawyers in New York that basically got uh, a slap on the wrist for committing terrorism acts? Uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.